Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain the difference between covalent and ionic bonding. As you know, atoms tend to complete their outer shell or valence electrons by applying Dewitt rule or octet rule, which are explained in details in another video that you may find the link for it in the description box. And usually, atoms complete their octet either by transfer of electrons to form ionic bonds or by sharing of electrons to form covalent bonds. Let me explain how. Welcome to Schooler, your online school. You may check your understanding by solving the individual questions. And good luck. Ionic bonding happens when there is a transfer of electrons. And usually it happens when metals react with non-metals. Metals are located on the left side of the periodic table and usually they have few electrons in their outer energy levels. While non-metals, which are located on the right side of the periodic table, they need few electrons to complete their octet. So what happens is that metals lose their valence electrons, which are gained by the non-metals, as you are going to see in the following example. Lithium belongs to group 1, so it has one valence electron, while chlorine belongs to group 17, and it has 7 valence electrons. For both atoms to be stable, lithium is going to lose one electron, and chlorine will gain that electron, so the electron will be transferred from lithium to chlorine. Lithium is going to form a positive ion, which is called a cation, with a charge plus 1, and chlorine is going to form a negative ion, with a charge negative 1, and it's called an ion, so the force of attraction between these two opposite charged particles is going to be called ionic bonding, and they are going to form a three-dimensional arrangement of ions, which is called crystal lattice. Another example, magnesium belongs to group 2, so it has two valence electrons, and fluorine belongs to group 17, so it has seven valence electrons. Magnesium, to be stable, should lose two electrons, and since fluorine can gain only one electron to be stable, magnesium is going to lose two electrons for two atoms of fluorine. Then magnesium is going to form a cation with a charge positive two, and each fluorine atom is going to form an anion with a charge negative one, and then form a crystal lattice. By the way, the ionic formula for lithium chloride is going to be LiCl, and the ionic formula for magnesium fluoride is going to be MgF2. If you find it difficult to write the ionic formulas, I will keep a useful link for you in the description box to show you how to write and to name ionic formulas. And now let's move to covalent bonding, which involves sharing of electrons. And usually, covalent bonding happens when nonmetals react with nonmetals. So both elements should be nonmetals to form covalent bonding. Like if we have two atoms of fluorine, and since fluorine is in group 17, both of them, they have seven valence electrons, and to complete their octet, both of them, they need one electron. So neither of the atoms will lose one electron for the other one. Instead, they are going to share one pair of electrons, and this sharing is going to be called covalent bonding, and since here they are sharing one pair of electrons, so it's called single covalent bond and to draw its Lewis structure is going to be like this also if you want to learn more about how to write Lewis structures I will keep a link for you in the description box two atoms may share one pair of electrons two pairs of electrons or even three pairs of electrons like the case of nitrogen molecules nitrogen belongs to group 15 so it has five valence electrons for both atoms to be stable they should share three pairs of electrons and their Lewis structure is going to be like this. One thing to mention before we move to polar and nonpolar covalent bonds is that ionic bonds are much stronger than covalent bonds. And you can see this easily if you compare the bonds energy between covalent and ionic bonds as you can see in the following table. Ionic bonds have much higher energies than covalent bonds, which means that they are much stronger than covalent bonds. Covalent bonds can be polar or nonpolar, and to predict the type of bonding, 
between two atoms, we have to calculate the difference between their electronegativities. Electronegativity, it's a measure of how strongly atoms attract bonding electrons to themselves. And by the way, I have a video in my channel explaining the trends of electronegativity throughout the periodic table. Please refer to it whenever is needed. Usually electronegativity of elements are displayed in tables like this. And to predict the type of bonding between two atoms, simply we deduct their electronegativities. And if the electronegativity difference is between 0 and 0 0.5, then the bond is going to be nonpolar. If the difference is between 0 0.5 and 2.1, then the bond is going to be polar. And if it's above 2.1, then we know that the bond between the two atoms is ionic. So to predict the type of bond between fluorine and lithium, since that the electronegativity difference is more than 2.1, so we know that the bond between fluorine and lithium is going to be ionic. Well, if we want to predict the type of bond between oxygen and hydrogen, since the difference in electronegativity is more than 1.2, so we know that the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is polar covalent bond, and so on. So let me give you an example about polar and nonpolar molecules. Like the water molecule, as we mentioned earlier, that the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is polar, which means that the electrons that are shared between oxygen and hydrogen are going to be closer towards oxygen, which gives the oxygen a partial negative charge and hydrogens a partial positive charge. While in the case of fluorine molecules, since both atoms they have the same electronegativity, the electrons are going to be shared equally between the two atoms and then the bond between them is going to be nonpolar. Now sometimes the bond can be polar while the molecule itself is nonpolar. And to know more about these molecules, hit the links in the description box. And now you are ready to solve the end of video questions. If you are not, repeat the video again. Otherwise, solve the questions, put your answer in the comments section. If you have any question that I didn't cover in the video, please share it with me in the comments section. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more videos. See you in other videos and good luck.